All right, we'll go ahead and get started. We're joined by tonight's race-winning crew chief of the number five Hendrick Motorsports Chevrolet, Kevin Meandering, and Jeff Gordon, vice chairman of Hendrick Motorsports. We'll go ahead and open up the floor for questions. Just raise your hand, we'll get you a wireless mic. Any questions? All right, start up here with Bob and then Mike. Bob Parkshock, Sports F1 for each. Kevin, first, just what does this mean to you on a personal level, getting a win as a crew chief? Um, it's, a, it's a big accomplishment, but like I said before, this isn't about me. This is about this team. Um, they got a great group of guys here. They got a great leader in Cliff, and uh, I was just happy to kind of fill a gap and, and help those guys out in a tough situation, but this is a testament to all the hard work from those guys on that team and everybody at Hendrick Motorsports. And for Jeff, um, this is uh, Ricky Hendrick's birthday day, and I'm curious what do you see in Hendrick Motorsports that he, still today that he had an impact on? Yeah, I think you know days like today makes you wonder, you know, what what Ricky's presence would do for us, you know, if he was here with us today, and and what what his leadership, uh, you know. He was so passionate about Hendrick Motorsports and, and racing. And so it's nice days like today, uh, you know, when you do something special on his birthday. And, and you know, I was talking to Rick, and he was emotional and, and excited. And so, um, you know, his presence is still here. And, and I think that, um, you know, certainly our, our folks try to do everything they can to make, you know, Rick Hendrick proud. But uh, when you know what Ricky's uh, impact could have been on, on, on our company and the people and, and you know, the five car and that paint scheme and what that means to, to the whole company, uh, it's, it, it's very rewarding to, to know that we're, uh, we're still kind of thinking of him and paying tribute to him as often as we can. And maybe he's looking down on us as well. I, I, I do want to say one thing about it. Yeah, he's going to shove all, all the credit to to me, what I love about seeing a guy like Kevin come in and do this is the depth of our of our people and our and our uh, company. Um, we've been put under you know really really difficult circumstances uh, with with all four crew chiefs being out and just the job that I've watched them do, um, how they've communicated. You know, getting. I mean, we're lucky we have people that have been crew chiefs that have a lot of experience, but. At the same time, with this car, with no practice, no qualifying, there's so much that has to be done to tie everything together. So, you know, great job to Kevin for the hard work that he's put in, as well as uh, he's still doing his other job, too, <laughs> in that contribution. Mike Henry from NBC Sports. Kevin, with all that was going on there in the last 30, 40, 50 laps, with cautions and, <clears throat> and all, how were you dealing with the tire question? Was there any doubt that you would come in almost whenever you could? To get new tires? Actually, uh, that last set of tires we put on was our last set. So we were, we were starting to run out of tires, but the laps were winding down. It was kind of, we kind of uh, planned it out and we had a strategy going into the race. Uh, and then it kind of worked out in our favor. With about 20 to go, we put our last set on, and, and that's probably late enough in the race where we wouldn't have to worry about uh, having to put another set on. So it just kind of fell in our favor. Uh, I mean, you kind of saw with the 19, he didn't have any stickers left there at the end, and he kind of dropped pretty quickly. So there's definitely a lot of fall off, especially the first five, ten laps. Uh, it, it's pretty considerable, but we were kind of on the same strategy as the majority of the field, so tire-wise, we, we were in a good spot. All right, we'll go to Nathan and then over here in the middle. Nathan Song with the podium finish. Jeff, this is for you. You know, with, with Josh finishing second today, obviously he's been in the car the last month or so in, in place at Chase. Just what's the growth you've seen out of him uh, in, in these races he's been in the nine car? Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like he's done a great job every time he's been in the car. And, and you start to see a bit of a trend with him. Of course, we didn't do him any favors by him, you know, starting 30th today. And made, we made one adjustment there early that didn't seem to go the right direction. They got even further behind. So to see them climb up through there, the car come to life and then of course you know staying out there paid off and, and caught the caution but you know josh it, it, when you look at his lap times he's he's a guy that he, he gets in there he fills the car out doesn't take you know too many risks or chances until he knows what he has 
and then and then you just start to see the lap times come and build and the the, the run pull be, start to come together and every time i'm scanning i kept hearing by the end of the run hey those lap times are really good hey those lap times are similar to the, the leaders so you know he, he clearly knows how to manage tires and manage a race well uh it seems like the longer the race the better he he does and so uh you know, we're yeah we're, we're really happy with the, the job that he's done and and certainly we everybody's known his talent you'll watch him in other forms of racing late models but uh in the xfinity series but you know when you you got to put him in other cars with other teams and other people to really see how far he can take it so i think he's got he's got a future in the cup series over here in the middle mm -hmm. Uh, yes, Barry Richmond, Piedmont Broadcast and WAKG. That was the question I was going to ask, but Jeff, for you as a driver to driver, what's the significance of this young man at this point to have that level of success with an organization like Hendrick Motorsports? Yeah, you know, most young guys, right, they, they come in and, and they have to build up their their experience and their knowledge and and you know, the confidence and everything else and hope you get the chance to be in quality equipment um you know even when i came in it was at hendrick but it was a whole new team and, and brand new people and and so it took us a while to, to build that um you know to truly measure somebody's talent you plug them into an existing top caliber team and that's that's what has taken place here and then you say, okay, let's see you, what, what you can do. And, and clearly, he's been proving that you know he, he has the, the, the talent and the ability, um, as well as the work ethic. I think you know that's what you don't see behind the scenes. He's a quiet guy, but behind the scenes, he's doing all the things that he ha needs to do to get prepared. And he's still running Xfinity too, and trying to win a championship over there. So yeah, no, great great job by him. Jeff, uh, Trey Lyle, Virginia Talk Radio Network. Uh, given this week and how, you know, the points penalty got rescinded, you get the 10 playoff points back, and then you end up winning the race. Like, what are the emotions kind of as a team? You get three cars in the top 10. William led a bunch of laps today. It has to feel good kind of. You, you have four cars theoretically earned the most points this week because they got 100 back, and they had a really good day. Well, I, I'm probably looking at it a little bit different than you are because I don't know that we should have ever had the points taken away to begin with. But, uh, you know, yeah, it's been a good week. You know, it's been really stressful trying to, you know, to prep for an appeal and, and not knowing what the outcome is going to be. And, and, you know, I, I'm, we're certainly happy with, you know, what the, the appeals committee came to, to that conclusion. But at the same time, um, you know, we feel like we laid out enough information there that it shouldn't have ever happened, or you know, even even the the the, the monetary side of it, and the crew chief side of it. The, we were really hoping we were going to get you know all of that back, but we're gonna we're gonna move on from that, and um, then we you know we come in here obviously with qualifying raining out that uh, paid off you know in more ways than than, than one. And good track position, and, and then you know fast race cars, and I mean once the green flag dropped, it's all about those teams executing and doing their job. But um, you know certainly quite a few smiles around campus this day, and it, you know been they've been down with what happened, and and so that definitely re-energized our folks this this week and and coming into this weekend's race, and certainly this win will do a lot for us as we move forward and go to Bristol. Come up from to Al. Yeah, Al Pierce from Auto Week. For either of you guys or both, excuse me, uh, have you heard from Cliff yet? <laughs> and was he was he in contact with you throughout the day or Jeff with you or have you I've heard not, from him yet? I, I've not seen or heard from Cliff. I don't know if Kevin no, has. No, I haven't either. But, I mean, obviously we've we've been in contact with him throughout the weekend and, and remotely. So, no, it's, this, is, this is a big win for him as well as, well as for all of us. Yeah, I guarantee you he's jumping up and down and excited. I, I was thinking about Cliff, though, during the race when, when Kyle made the contact with uh, Suarez. I, I, I was seeing Cliff throw things wherever he was, and, uh, and then I could see him jumping up, down, screaming and yelling when, when the win happened. Thank you. All right, well, we'll come right over here. Randy Holman from the, the Richmond Times Dispatch. Uh, you guys, you've got uh, three wins for the team and, and five for the Chevy camp. 
in in seven races so far. Are we on are we on the cusp of a historic season for for Chevy and for Hendrick? Well, it's too early to tell. I mean, certainly off to a great start, and you know our our, our folks at Chevy are doing an amazing job with um, you know not only the design of this car starting last year, but also some of the new uh, things that have brought, been brought to all the OEMs and, and the opportunities that, that they've had. I think Chevy did an excellent job with that as well. So, um, you know, and, and, and then the job that the teams do, collaborating together, you know, sharing information and trying to prepare for, for each and every race. And they've done, done an amazing job. Um, you know, you could, you could have looked at that race today and there were times where the, the Gibbs Toyotas were the best cars on the long run. Um, you know, you, you had times when I, I thought the 22 was really, really good. The four was good. So, you know, I think I think there is a lot of parity out there. But um, I, you know, right right now, I just like the way that I'm seeing our teams execute and our our teams come prepared and the speed that are in our race cars and um, you know w w doesn't seem like we're the only Chevy team you know seeing that. So that's good. Uh, Adam Cheek, FrontChurch.com. Jeff, uh, you're a guy that's won at Richmond before. We saw you come up to Josh and congratulate him after the race. Wh how have you seen him grow in the races he's done with Hendrick? And what did you did you guys talk at Rich about Richmond at all in preparation for this? I've been pretty tied up this week, I'll be honest. So <laughs> that's been, you know, with, with Tom Gray and with, with Alan Gustafson and that, that whole team. All, all I know is all, them bragging on him a lot about, you know, the effort that he's putting in, the things that he's focused on, and e even look, watching video from last year when maybe they didn't even ask him to, and he just kind of took the initiative to do that. So um, th today, I, I think every race gets his confidence up, but, you know, you go into a new track, different track every time, and, and so, you know, it's, okay, what's the car going to be like this weekend? Okay, what's it going to be like this weekend? You threw, a, you know, Atlanta in there on him too, and that was that's a pretty unique one. Uh, but it's a much different car than what he's cap uh, you know used to uh, racing every weekend, and so there's a a lot of things that you have to adapt completely different to. I'm not even sure if Saturday's not hurting him for for the Sunday races because the cars are so much different. The sidewall, you know, the tires, the rear and independent rear suspension. How, just to me, going from an H pattern transmission to a sequential would would throw me off. You know, big brakes. Um, car doesn't have a lot of downforce. You can't put the skew in it. I mean, there's a lot of things that are different about what he's doing. So I love his approach, um, and it's turned into results, which I'm sure has turned into confidence for him as he, uh, you know, continues to, to go to each track that he's going to be behind the wheel of the car. We'll go to Jordan, then Mike, then back over here. From Yankee Athletic, I apologize if this has already been asked, but what was the – what do you think was the reason you guys were successful when you guys – with the appeal on Wednesday? Well, I, I just think, you know, we were very transparent from the beginning of, of you know, why we believe there was a miscommunication and, and what happened. And I feel, I, I, I said this in Atlanta, it should have never even come to that. It, it you know, there, I, I don't want to give up too much information because I want to respect the process. Um, but it's also a little frustrating that nothing gets shared from what, you know, determines whether there's, points given back or whether there's money not given back and, you know, crew chief suspension. So, um, you know, I, I just feel like there was enough there that it's not clear cut. It's not just a black and white situation because there was enough communication to justify why we showed up to the racetrack in Phoenix the way we did. Um, and I think that, that, you know, had it been handled in a situation more like the wheels at Daytona with RFK and Penske, I think, you know, that, that, that's the way it should have been handled. It's, I understand it. There's a reason why you did this. And there's also a reason why you need to take them off the car. But, but it should never, to me, elevate it up to the, the level that it did. And I, clearly, the, the panel felt very similar to that. Go to Mike. Jeff, you're, <clears throat> you're shuffling papers now and writing budgets and things and running running the show. So, but how how different are the emotions for you with these wins from when you were driving? 
It's much different. I mean, you know, when, when you're in the car, the adrenaline and working with these guys and seeing what they put into it, um, you know, you're, you're a part of, of the effort that's on the racetrack. And there's, there's an emotion that you'll never be able to um, compare to. But I can, I can tell you that when, you know, we win a championship like we did in, you know, 20 and 21, you know, to me, th those are very, very exciting moments for me where I felt like I was driving. Um, you know, today, it's, it's exciting and it's emotional, but it's mainly just seeing these guys do their, their job and, and do it well, do it at a high level and stepping up when the, when the pressure's on and, you know, whether it's a pit call or whether it's a restart or it's a, a pit stop, you know, whatever it may be, that's, that's, you, you just feel pride, you know, you feel pride in, in the organization because you see how they work throughout the week over the off season and what they're focused on and then seeing that turn into results. And I know everybody works hard in this garage area and, and probably deserves to have great results. But when you do get it, you know, you, you just feel extremely fortunate to work with such great people and have such great people on the race teams as well as behind the wheel. All right, we'll come right over here. Steven Sykes, Alive in Global Media. There's been a lot of talk earlier this season about the new next generation cars and, you know, more vent holes for more breathing into the car for safety. How did you feel any of that had any effect towards your strategy for this year's race versus previous races? You want to take that one? Not sure I completely understand the question. Didn't, there's a lot of changes with the next gen cars, and how did that affect? For you? this year, you mean? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I will say this. You know, the, I think it was the 15 car backed into the wall right. earlier, and you saw the rear of the car collapse. And, and that's, I think, what the drivers are asking, right, is, is to have it absorb more. Because we're still not seeing any, any real uh, progress when you're at pl places like Coda, or, you know, we, we, earlier in the year when we were at the class with guys just running straight into their, their bumpers. So at low impacts, I don't think that there's been, you know, significant, um, um, you know, progress there. But there's a lot of discussions happening to fix that, and, and I'm happy about that. But if, if that's the changes that you're talking about, then I, I did at least see, um, you know, something good happen there. What will be the next set of changes you would like to see for you and your team? Well, I, I think there's a lot of technology in head support, foam padding, and, and, and absorption. And so they have to do these, these uh, like, drop tests where they, you know, um, kind of the helmet design, inner padding, the headrest itself. And then I, I think, and Kevin should be answering it because he knows about structures of car. He's an engineer. Uh, I just know from a race car driver, I'm seeing these guys, they're taking these small hits, and their head is whiplashing inside the car, and that's not good. And so I, I think the rear bumper structure and the front bumper structure is far too stiff still. And so I'd like, like to see them you know, find a way to make that a little bit more, um, you know, a, a, a kind of gives a little bit more. I don't know if it's in the foam, if it's in the, the you know, metal structure, because it's all aluminum, uh, you know, structure in there that's very, very stiff. But today we lo at least saw some collapse in the chassis, which I think needs, ha I really think that the, fuel cell needs to move further forward. That's what's gonna probably help. And, and you know, the, the Garage 56 car has that, so I think some of the things that, that, that we're seeing on the Garage 56 car, we might be able to see that into the future in, the, in, in, in our cars that we're racing as well. All right, any further questions? All right, thank you. Kevin, Jeff, congratulations. All right, we're now joined by tonight's race winner, Kyle Larson, driver of the number five Hendrick Motorsports Chevrolet. Once again, we'll go ahead and open it up for questions. Raise your hand, we'll get you a wireless mic. Go ahead and start with Bob. Bob Pockers, Fox Sports. You've had a couple wins slip away this year after you had that damage from with the contact with Suarez. Did you think, oh, this is another one of those days? Um, I wouldn't say that ever crept into my mind. I was just kind of hoping and praying that the damage was the reason why uh, I got slow and um, obviously couldn't see the damage. Uh, still haven't seen how it was dented, but um, I was definitely a lot slower then. So I was you know, hoping, hoping once we got to the end of the second stage that they could fix it and then that our car would go 
back to normal because um, I was surprised at how bad I was after that. So um, I felt like I was before that pit stop, we were going to cruise to a stage two win. And then, uh, yeah, kind of fell apart there. So, um, yeah, I was just mad at the situation and um, you're mad at just not knowing if it was the damage, why I was bad, or if just the track had gone through transition and we were going to be, you know, average the rest of the race. But uh, thankfully, that wasn't the case, and you were able to uh, you get refocused there to start the third stage and inch our way forward, and then um, have some you know things work out for us, cautions work out at the right time, and our pit crew, you executed a great pit stop there at the last one. We'll go right over here, and then we'll go to Mike, and then we'll take a question from the press box. Chris Powell, Couch Coach Live. Congratulations, Cal, on the victory. Uh, talk about kind of that frustration. How did you overcome it? And then the impact of uh, uh, Hendrick Motorsports um, in your career. Yeah, no, it was, um, you know, a lot of, I feel like a lot of the races, I mean, even looking at last week, like my race was going good in the beginning, and then you know, one uh, small mishap um, turned into me trying too hard, and I, and then I made a lot more mistakes and kind of hurt our day going forward. So, um, you know, when, when I was going backwards in the second stage and mad, I just needed a caution to take a break and, and then, you know, tell myself just to not overreact and just, you know, we still have 170-something laps left or whatever it was, and, you know, it's plenty of time to get back to the front. So um, our car was good enough to uh, to do that, too. But um, – and then, yeah, the, the impact of, of Hendrick Motorsports has been, you know, amazing for my career, obviously. Uh, I've won a lot of races um, with them, and, and now, you know, a championship in 2021. And, um, you know, it was Ricky Hendrick's uh, birthday today um, that I learned about as well. So – um, just a, a great day um, all around for Hendrick Motorsports. Great week, especially. So, um, yeah, a lot of significance to this week, and, and I'll probably remember it now for a long time. Go ahead. Mike Embry, NBC Sports. <clears throat> Kyle, what, what was the uh, – after the incident, what did the car feel like? Was it noticeably different from damage? Yeah, and typically, you know, when you leave from a green flag stop, it, it feels different, you know, because there's – rubber on the track and all that. So, you know, I took off from the green flag stop and I was like, okay, my car is driving different than it did to start this run. So, um, and I didn't think that I hit Suarez that hard. It didn't feel that hard for my seat. So I was like, okay, it's whatever. And um, I was like, man, I'm not good. I'm, I was really tight loading into the corner, snap loose off, um, you know, lap cars were driving by me. So I was just like, man, like, is this, is this the track change? Um, or, and then they told me that the damage, and um, yeah, there was just nothing I could do to manage you know, what I was fighting. And I think when I was tight in the center, it just pissed off my exit and my rear tires, and I was really, really bad, really lacking traction that run. So I'm, I was just shocked that uh, the damage did that much to me. But uh, thankfully, it was in an area where they could pop it back out, and, and our car drove fine after that. And what about the the uh, Ricky's birthday and and the paint scheme and all that? Is it a special, extra special thing for you to have all that come together? Yeah, for sure. No, it definitely is. Um, you anytime you I've, it's been me racing this five car has been special, but especially this paint scheme. Um, you know, I was watching uh, just flipping through like old YouTube videos this week of you know my 2021 season so I could remind myself that I used to be good. But, um, <laughs> you know, I didn't realize after watching it that Vegas was our first race, you know, my first win with Hendrick, and that was my first race with that paint scheme and the colors that year. Um, you know, Kansas later on that year was, um, I think it was 17 years to the date of the accident. Um, and then, you know, now this, you'll win it on his birthday. It's all really special and it's kind of crazy, kind of how, you know, things maybe work out, um, you know, from the power above, you know, things work out uh, that way. So um, pretty special for sure. And, you know, there's a couple other birthdays on our team also. You know, my Jack man, he turned 30 today. My spotter turned 30 today. So uh, just a, a special day all around and um, look forward to you know, celebrating with them. We'll take a question from the press box. Yeah, Joshua Weatherman, Short Track Report. Uh, what were your thoughts about the new Short Track package, and what do you think we can expect when we get back on the pavement at Martinsville? So I thought, um, 
I thought things felt more normal to like the previous model car. I felt like um, you know, last year here at Richmond, like you could follow somebody down to the bottom and you would just get so tight. And uh, even if they missed the bottom a little bit in front of you, you'd get tight. But today seemed like, you know, normal. Like you could wrap the paint, you could, you know, if somebody missed the bottom in front of you, you could like throttle up and get to their back bumper. Um, so you just, I just didn't feel as affected behind people in traffic. So I was pleased with that. Um, it seemed like there was more passing. It seemed like there was a little more coming and going um, compared to last year's races. I'm curious what other drivers think, but uh, I thought it was an improvement. I thought it was an improvement at Phoenix, but I thought it was a, even more of an improvement compared to the racing we had here last year um, for this race. So, um, yeah, I was happy about that. Come right here. Andrew Stoddard, uh, frontstretch.com, Kyle, over here. Um, so it seems like your close competition pretty much throughout the day were the uh, JTR Toyotas. Were you kind of expect them to be your closest competition? And kind of how how did you compare the Hendrick Chevys compared to the JGR Toyotas throughout the race? Yeah, always when you come to Richmond, you know that uh, the Gibbs cars are going to be the the ones to beat. Um, they just have a uh, a package, I guess, for this for this track and. Um, so I knew, or at least I thought going into the race, you, know, you don't know uh, without practice, but I thought going into the race that they were going to be the tough ones. And, um, you know, when I was going backwards in the end of that second stage, a lot of the cars past me were Gibbs cars. So I was like, okay, they're, they're really good. And I could see them kind of chewing up on, on Williams lead in front of me and then ultimately passing him too. So, um, yeah, they were, they were probably still better than, than we were, um, today, but, um, you know, this has historically been a really bad track for Hendrick, too, so um, to have all of us run up front majority of the day, uh, come away with a 1-2 finish, um, lead as many laps as we did between William and I, like it was uh, you know, the, best, the best day I think Hendrick's had at Richmond in, in decades, probably, so um, you know, proud of the effort and, and really, really proud of how we've been as a whole organization at every racetrack you know, so far this season. We'll come to Alex, then Barry, then back up to the press box, then over to Nathan. Hi, Kyle. Alex Zetlow of the Charlotte Observer. Um, I found it funny that you said that you watched your, um, your highlights from your championship season to prove that you were quote-unquote good, or a, a time remind when you were quote- Remind myself, not proof. Remind, <laughs> sorry, sorry, remind yourself. Um, can you expound on that? Uh, what, like, why did you do it? Uh, what'd you learn, et cetera? Um, I don't know, just trying to, I don't know, I was just bored at night the other night, but, um, no, I mean, it was a great season and just kind of like listening to even post-race interviews and kind of where my mindset was at then when I was winning a lot, just to kind of compare to what I think I'm like maybe right now. Um, you yeah, the next gen stuff, it's so like up and down, like it's easy to, and, and obviously 2021 was so strong that like we were just riding a high kind of all season and. Um, expectations were high, execution was great, results were amazing. Um, where since we've gotten in the next gen car, it's like, man, like it's hard to get your confidence up. So, um, yeah, I just really wanted to look at old tape of myself and like just kind of see where my mindset was and see my confidence and um, just, yeah, just do all that. So it was, I don't think it mattered for the race today, but like just to, I don't know, kind of reset your mindset a little bit. I'll come over here. Uh, Barry Richmond, Piedmont Broadcast and WAKG. Uh, you know, you um, uh, did today you talked about the odds for the most part were against uh, a good finish here today at Richmond for Hendrick Motorsports, even though you all really had a, a great day. But having won today and then going to a track where for the most part, it, it fits your driving style. I heard your name mentioned in different venues today as a favorite going to Bristol. Um, uh, what does that do for you going to Bristol, especially going in as a, as a favorite? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I could have ran last in every single race leading into Bristol, and the media is probably going to point to me as being the favorite anyways at Bristol just because it's a dirt track. So um, I don't know. It doesn't it does not matter to me. Uh, I know that we're going to be good at – every racetrack, um, so that's, that's promising, um, but yeah, it is, it's, 
it's so different than the dirt racing that I do uh, during the week. Um, that uh, you know these heavy stock cars drive nothing like um, even a dirt late model that's 2,400 pounds. So um, it's yes, you know, like I maybe can read a track better than people. But now this is our third year on it, so I think you know everybody's kind of got a good idea of of what to look for. Um, I feel like the track prep crew does a good job of making things consistent throughout the years and but the weekend especially so yeah i think um it's gonna be at least in the two races that we've ran there it's it's your same guys that run up front you know here today will probably be up front hit uh at bristol next week too so um yeah i think we'll be because we've been a lot better at, at all these racetracks so far this year i think we'll be better than what we were there last year we weren't we weren't great um you know, we were good when the track had grip not great when it got slick so yeah, I'm sure we've learned from it, and we'll hopefully be better going back. Congratulations, thank you. Yep, thank you. Go over to Nathan. Nathan Song with the podium finish. Kyle, obviously, you know, you get the points back this week, you get the victory, so how does this change your outlook for the rest of the season? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It doesn't really change my outlook for the rest of the season. I, I felt like, yo, know, yes, we got hit with 100 points and all that, um, but I felt like my our race cars were really fast all year long, so I knew we were going to have mo you know many opportunities to win, and um, yeah, we were just uh, able to do that today. And I know we're gonna have more opportunities going forward. So it really doesn't nothing has changed um, you know, my my confidence, I guess. Uh, going uh, into sorry, I seen my buddy he just blew up <laughs> bad so. Um, was checking that out. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Just uh, try to keep executing. And then, you know, in, in those last couple of restarts, you raced Josh there for the win. So in these last couple of weeks that he's, he's been in the nine car and that he's been in the shop, just what have you seen out of him in, in terms of his growth? Well, he's he's a v extremely good race car driver and, um, you know, a great short track racer. So, um, you know, I think it – it's hard for me to follow along when I'm out there racing, but uh, I think due to their track position that they had throughout the race, you, they were on a totally different strategy there at the end, just hoping you to catch a caution. And, and that's ultimately what happened. Um, their team did a great job on pit road and he came out second. And, um, you know, me being a leader, I was, I was nervous cause I hadn't been around him all, all day. Um, I know he's a super good short track racer. Um, so yeah, it was. I knew it was gonna be tough, and and thankfully we got clear of him. But um, you know, he's he's done a phenomenal job filling in. I think you know he. It's been nice to have him a part of the debriefs. Um, you know, I feel like. He describes his car really well. He seems, like he's probably really easy to work with. Um, you know, I'm sure the nine team probably feels he's easy to work with. So, um, I've I've enjoyed having him a part of our team, you know, throughout uh, you know, Chase's injury. So I hope I hope whenever Chase comes back, you know, that Josh gets more opportunity going forward and, and good equipment because, I mean, he is a Cup Series caliber driver, and he's proven it, you know, just in the few races that he's ran. So um, he's very, very deserving of, of being in the Cup Series, and, you know, he's worked extremely hard his whole career to, to get these opportunities. Michael Massey, French Stretch. Kyle, we've kind of gotten used to you being the guy over the years that's like you're the first to go to the to the wall, run the the top lane. It seemed like the the package or tires something let it kind of the racing groove extend a little bit here. But there's only a couple guys really running up against the wall, and they weren't they weren't winning. Uh, what what more do you think it needed for for that to be a, a preferable line? Um, well, I mean, if your car is good, you don't need to go up there. So. The guys who were up there, it's because their cars were really bad. Um, yeah, I think early in the race, the 47 was going really good. Um, it was kind of unfortunate to see him have his, I guess, brake issues because he was making the top work before that competition caution. And then after that, you could tell he had brake issues. But who knows? You know, Maybe had he been towards the front and, and showing speed up there, you know, to drug others up there. But usually Richmond's like that. You know, Richmond, like, especially after rains and stuff, um, you know, that first run, it'll you'll just kind of – most majority of the people run around the bottom, like where you should be at Richmond. And um, you know, you'll drag, you'll just run until the rubber gets to the wall and then everybody comes back down. So 
it's just the product of this racetrack, I think. Um, there's only been like one Richmond race, I can't remember what year, but like where I remember running the wall. Um, and again, like I don't want to run the wall <laughs> at any track. I just feel like, you know, if my car is not handling where I, how I want it on the bottom, I have to find speed elsewhere. But um, if your car is good, you just stay glued to the bottom. All right, we'll take our, front, our final question from Bob. Uh, Bob Hawkers, Fox mm -hmm. Sports. When you're battling Josh Berry there on a late restart, somebody that you, I assume you haven't really raced against a whole lot, is there any question in your mind like that you don't know what he's going to do? Um, sure, I mean, as far as like aggression, no, I didn't think of that. But like, you know, I could tell that first restart, you know, he, and, and I, you know, myself both, like that was the first time I restarted on the front row on the inside. So like, we both kind of underdrove one and um, I got clear of him pretty easy. So when we got that quick caution, I was like, dang, you know, like now he, now he knows how much further he can run the corner and, and all that. So he did a much better job that second time. And uh, I had to work, I had to work a lot harder to get clear of him off of two. Um, so I was more just thinking about one and two, like how we're gonna get through there. And if he's on my right side, um, you know, he's probably got a pretty good idea how to pass people because he's been in traffic the whole race. So. Um, but thankfully it worked out where I got clear and kind of just managed my stuff and, you know, take care of my tires in case we had another, another caution. All right. Thank you so much, Kyle. Congratulations.